Hello friends. In this experiment, we are going to talk about AC response of series CR circuit. So what is the aim of our experiment? Aim of our experiment is to study the response of the series CR circuit to AC signal and find the value of the capacitance C connected in the circuit. So we'll need some apparatus. So we'll be doing this experiment on a simulator. So we'll be using an online simulator called as multi-sim for simulating the series CR circuit. The address of this uh, online simulator is multisim.com. So once you open a multisim.com and if you are registered user in the multisim.com, you can open the uh, untitled circuit in multisim. On the left hand side, you have a toolbar. The toolbar is designed for taking the components and pasting it in the schematic. Okay, so we'll look at we'll look at which component we need for our this particular experiment. So from the component bar, which is shown in the diagram, we will need AC source of 50 hertz, transformer, resistance, capacitor, voltmeter with reference point. Now, before we start, we'll, before we go to the simulator and work out the experiment, we'll understand the theory behind the experiment. So let's go to the theory. So uh, what is capacitive reactance? So if we have an AC current, I, with the frequency F, is passing through the capacitor of value C, then voltage across the capacitor, which is, is given by Vc, is Vc is equal to Xc into I where Xc is a capacitive reactance given by 1 upon 2 pi Fc. So Xc acts like a resistance for a capacitance and it depends on the frequency of the circuit. Now let's consider an AC source connected to C and R series, C and R in series. Like we have an AC signal and it is connected to a resistance R and that is connected to the capacitor C in series. And say, let's say the current I is passing through this circuit. So impedance of this circuit, which is Z is given by Z is equal to V in by I. Where Z itself is given by Z square is equal to R square plus X square. Now, if by while doing the experiment, suppose we make R is equal to zero, then Z square is equal to R square plus X square becomes Z is equal to XC. And we already know what is XC. XC is nothing but one upon two pi FC. So our aim is to take the circuit of RC and make R is equal to zero. And when R is equal to zero, measure the current, calculate, find out the Z and that Z is nothing but equal to X. That is our way of approaching the, uh, find the value of C but it will be impractical to reduce all the resistance of the circuit to zero because that will increase the current uh, very high. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll use an indirect method. So we'll calculate impedance Z of the circuit for different values of resistance R and then use the data to estimate or extrapolate the value of Z at R is equal to zero. So we'll take value of Z at different R and from that data, we'll just estimate what will be the value of Z at R is equal to zero. Okay. So how we'll go about it, the whole experiment. So we'll measure the voltage VR across the resistance capital R to calculate the current I passing through it because that will be governed by the Ohm's law. So we get current I is equal to VR upon R. Now this current R itself can be used to find out Z because same current will be passing through all the components. We can say that the impedance Z of the circuit is given by V in upon I. The above steps are repeated again for different values of R. So for different values of R, I will be different and Z will be different. So we'll get some data. So let's look at the observation table. We have this, I have just created an observation table. We have a first column, which is R, different values of R will take here then the value of the voltage across the resistance measured is a second column. Current calculated from there using the Ohm's law is a third column. 
and finally the z which is calculated from the v in and i let's say that for demo demonstration purpose we take values of r from 1000 to 4000 in the steps of 500 ohms once we we have this r values we can for every r value we can cal we can measure vr calculate i and z once we get the values of z for different values of r we can take r square and z square so i have created a new table which has first column as r square and second column as z square now we can plot the graph of z square versus r square and we know that the circuit is followed by the equation z square is equal to r square plus x square so if you plot the graph of z square versus r square it should be a straight line so we get some data so suppose we have already taken a data and the data is here so we can plot a best fit line so best fit line will will not pass through the origin it will pass it will intersect the z axis at particular value so y intercept is nothing but the value where r is equal to 0 so we can say that whatever value we are getting as a y intercept is nothing but the value corresponding to r is equal to 0 so we can say y intercept is say yi square so x square is equal to yi square because that is the value at r is equal to 0 and that gives us x is equal to y and we know the value of x so we can say that c is equal to 1 upon 2 pi 2 pi f y now before we go to the final experiment in the simulator we have added few things so that our experiment in the simulator will will be very close to the experiment which is done in the lab so i added two more things which are not required in the simulation but that will be useful once we go for the actual experiment in the physical lab so we will be using rms values of current and voltages vr v as in the actual experiment which is performed in the lab we generally use multimeter to take the readings and multimeter gives us rms values similarly we will connect the transformer to the ac source instead of connecting ac source directly to r and c circuit the reason behind this is that in the actual experiment we use a step down transformer connected to the ac main source and the secondary is used as a uh, source to the rc circuit so we'll keep the same thing when we are doing the simulation this is the both the steps are not compulsory but they will keep the actual experiment and the simulation very close to each other now let's go to the simulator and let's see uh, uh, let's perform the experiment i have logged in in multisim and now after logging in the multisim i got a option create circuit so we'll click on create circuit after clicking on create circuit we will get a blank board on which we can build the circuit and we'll just change the title we'll write cr circuit ac so it got three options schematic grapher and split so schematic will just show us a circuit diagram grapher will show us a uh, graphs of current versus time or voltage versus time and split will show both of them together so let's build up the circuit first in the left hand side we have a component bar in that component bar we'll go to the third option which is sources in that we'll select the ac source once we select the ac source you can see that we have a ac source here so i have clicked it so i place the ac source here right now it is 1 volt 1 kilohertz i'll click on the voltage value let me make it 10 volts and frequency we are going to make it 50 hertz which is the frequency of the ac main then we'll go to the fourth option which is passive components in that we'll go to the transformers so in transformer we'll have 1p 1s so i'm going to place it here if i double click on that you can see that we are on the right hand side we get the properties of the transformer so in the properties of the transformer there are p turns which is a primary turns and s turns which are secondary turns 
So for demonstration purpose, we'll keep primary turns and secondary turns same. So let me make them 10, 10. So that whatever is the input given to the primary of the transformer will be the same as voltage output at the secondary of the transformer. Now let me connect the transformer, transformer and the AC signal. Is uh, transform the AC source. So I connected that. If you go to the corner, you get a real symbol. If you dragged it after that, you can connect to the AC main. Now what we can do, we can just drag this. I'm dragging those wires so that they look nice. Now at the secondary end, we'll add resistance and capacitors and we'll connect them in series. So I'll again go to the passive components. I'll click on the resistance. I'm going to place the resistance here. And then I'll go to the same option, select the capacitor. Right now the capacitor is horizontal. So let me just arrange it vertical. So I'll click on orientation. We get a capacitor vertical right now it has a value one microfarad but we won't we will ignore this value because we'll be calculating the value of the capacitor from the experiment so i'll go to the end of the secondary from there i'll take a wire and connect to the resistance r from the resistance r i'll take a second wire and go to the capacitor Then from the capacitor, again, we'll come back to the second end of the secondary. Now I'll just rearrange the wire so that circuit looks nice. Okay, so our RC circuit is connected to the secondary of the transformer. Let me label the resistance R1 as R. And these are default name labels. Let me make this as C. Now, the voltage at the AC source, 10 volts, is the voltage of the peak of AC source. Okay, now what we'll do, we'll put the multimeters here so that we can measure VR and V in. We'll go to the first option, analysis and annotation. There you can see a voltage. So we'll take a voltmeter and we'll place it before the resistance. So let me place it here. Okay. Once I place it here, I'll just click on that to relabel it. It is PR1, so let me write V, VR. Now this voltage will be measured with respect to a reference voltage. So let me take our voltage, reference voltage, voltage reference. I'll place it on the other end of the resistance. And let me relabel it as VR ref. So VR reference. Similarly, we'll take one more voltage, voltmeter, and put it on the one end of the secondary wire. Label it as V in and this V in will be measured with respect to a voltage reference which will be connected to the second end of the secondary and we'll again label that one as V in ref. Okay, so let's click on VR. Once you click on VR, the options related to VR will pop up on the right hand side. Now you can see the voltage reference is by default is ground. We'll select it to VR reference. So now VR will measure a voltage with respect to VR reference. Now we'll click on V in voltage, voltmeter. Again, the voltage reference is ground. So we'll click on that again, we'll say V in reference. So the voltage of V in will be measured with respect to V in reference. Now our circuit is ready. Our resistance is 1K. 
1000 kilohms and now what we'll do we'll simulate our circuit diagram or we'll run our circuit diagram for that i'll just click on split so we can see the circuit plus the waveform so let me play the circuit or run the circuit and you can see there is some waveform let me stop it so the waveform is going out of the range so we'll just make it uh, change the range so voltage minimum let me take as minus 10 because we know that v in will be between minus 10 and plus 10 so let me take it as minus 11 and plus 11. okay now in that single so i am just decreasing the time scale so now here you can see that we got some way we got both the waveforms vr and v in now vr is shown by green color and v in is shown by the blue color okay now we can measure the uh, the layer v pick for both of them for that what we'll do in the options for the voltmeter we have a cursor so click on cursor right now it is none so you select y axis so basically it says that it will measure the y value so cursor one is vr cursor two is v in okay so let me take cursor two here and put it on v in so this will give you the the c2 cursor will give you the peak value of v in and c1 let's put the c1 on peak of vr now c1 will give you the value of peak value of c vr now it the values of cursor 1 and 2 you can see at the bottom of the waveform so it says cursor 1 2.9675 and cursor 2 which is a v in is 10.018 so we can say that input voltage is 10 volt only and cursor 1 is 2.9675 so let me take it 2.968 and what i have done we have created an excel table for table 1 in that excel table first column is v in peak which is 10 volts and that is we have converted to v in rms value which is 3.54 the third column is resistance r and we'll write the value of vr which is 2. Point, let me check it 2.9675 2.9675 okay so now once we enter the 2.9675 we will go to the next resistance value and we'll calculate we'll measure what is vr similarly we take the readings for all resistance resistance values and then we'll enter a formula for vr uh, so that will be vrms value of vr pick and then we'll measure we'll calculate the current i and from there we'll calculate the impedance z so let me go back to the circuit again we got 1k here let's make it 1500k and let's run the circuit again you can see that i am running this uh, once after running the circuit we got some waveform i have stopped the simulation now as you can see that input is still the same it is 10 volts but the vr has changed because r value has increased vr also has increased so we can see vr is something here so let me adjust c1 cursor 1 again and we get 4.3063 so this way we can take readings for all resistances so every time we'll change the resistance and we'll take a value of vr peak for that particular resistance and those readings will populate the table one after taking the values of vr peak for different values of r we have populated the table one we have calculated vr rms and also calculate the current i rms value 
which is as shown in the diagram, shown in the table. And then we calculated the Z, which is V in RMS divided by I RMS. After getting these values, we created a secondary table, which is R square against Z square. So we got a first column, which is R square and second column is Z square. Now this R square and Z square is used to plot a graph. So we have a graph here, which is plotted from uh, using the Excel graph. You can see there are points which are plotted R square and Z square. Now I'll click on those points and I'll select add trend line. So basically we'll be adding a best fit line. So we'll select a linear best fit line. So because we know that these points are connected by a linear relationship. So we'll take a linear line, best fit line. And then we'll ask the uh, Excel to display the equation on, on the chart. So we got an equation on the chart, which is 1 crore 4,17,816.08, which is an intercept for the this particular line. And if you see the, the slope is approximately 1. So now let's take a y-intercept, which is 104.17.816.08. Okay, 0 0.08 we can ignore because this is a very large number. Once I press enter, the second light calculates the in square root of this intercept, which is 3228. And the third line, using that y square root of y intercept, calculates value of c. Okay, so it is 1 upon 2 pi f into yi. Now that gives us a value of 9.86 into 10 raised to minus 7. So this is 0 0.98 into 10 raised to minus 6. Okay. And we are taken the capacitor value, which is nothing but very close to this. So after doing the experiment, we got the value of C using this CSR. Thank you.